Praise the Lord, everyone. The first two words have, uh, we have heard it from the Gospel of Luke. And the third saying of Christ from the cross is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verses 26 and 27. Gospel of John, chapter 19, verses 26 and 27. But we read from verses 25, where it records like this. So the soldiers did this, but standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. This is a third word, or uh, this is a third word from the cross, from the mouth of Jesus that has been uttered. And in this saying from the cross, we peculiarly see that the earthly relation that Jesus had with his own mother, Mary, was coming to an end. And now here we find Jesus handing over his mother Mary to his most beloved son John who would look after her and take care of her. And through these words from the cross, Jesus made this fact very clear to John that this woman whom you are taking home with you, you are going to take care of her you are her son and she is your mother. This is where Jesus makes it very clear. And so when we read verses 26 and 27, particularly the one word that catches our attention is again Jesus addressing Mary not as his own mother, or ma, or I, or amma, or whatever language we call mothers articulate in the name of the mums for ourselves. But what he is saying is, he is addressing her as woman. Now the possible question here arises is why Jesus had to use this word hanging on the cross? Why did he appear so distinct, so detached from his mother at that time? What was the reason for giving this, addressing with this word and calling out his own mother who, with whom he has stayed for more than 33 years per probably, just calling out her name as woman? Two possible answers can be put, put forth for this, uh, to answer this question. Firstly, in the view of many biblical scholars, if Jesus would have called his mother, addressed his mother as mother at that time, it would have been very devastating for Mary as a mother. Jesus is hanging on the cross, he is in utter des desolation, he is in anguish, he is in pain, he is suffering. And now Jesus' calling Mary as mother would have added to his, her pain all the more. The pain that she was really suffering and undergoing along with her own son. We can very well imagine what would have been the condition of Mary when she was looking at Jesus, her own beloved son hanging on the cross right there. And at that time, if Jesus would have addressed her mother, 
it could have really been unbearable for her. It was, it was already unbearable for her. That could have been the possible reason, first of all. And secondly, one more possible reason could be is that when in our culture to call a woman by or address by the name woman, oh woman, hey woman, come here, it's very disrespectful. But in Jewish custom, this word was uttered out of respect. And in the episode, we see this in the episode at the wedding at Cana also, Jesus is found addressing his mother, not as mama or mother, but woman. Where he says, woman, my time has not yet come. And this is where this beloved son is handing over this beloved woman and the responsibility of her to his most beloved disciple. Now with this words, with these words that Jesus has uttered on the cross, I would like to draw out few important truths which can encourage our faith this morning. The first one, the first truth from the scripture itself can be drawn out from this word from the crosses, Jesus has never, is not, and will never ever leave us alone. And why I want to emphasize this truth here is, this is very much brought forth in the way Jesus has established the relationship between Mary and John. When Jesus says to Mary, look on John, here is your mother. And when he says to John, look on John, here is your mother and here is your son. Here Jesus makes very clear and very conspicuous that how our needs are to be met when we leave everything for the sake of Jesus and follow him. And this I would like to emphasize when Jesus says in Acts 20, 28, where Paul says that Christ has brought forth or bought the church with his own blood. And this is where a beautiful thing has happened from the cross that Jesus has given us a very great gift. And this gift is the gift of the church. The gift of a loving, caring, and a sustaining and an encouraging family in the form of a church. You and I as the church, the universal body of Christ as the church. When we leave everything for Christ's sake, he gives us a larger family than beyond our own family. We are related to one another in and through the death and sacrifice and resurrection of Christ. We are not related biologically or by blood, but by the death and resurrection and the sacrifice of Christ Jesus. Jesus. Through his blood, we are related to each other. That's the first thing that is made very clear through these words of Christ on the cross. Jesus never leaves us alone, for especially for those who have decided to follow him. Secondly, second thing or second insight we can draw is in Jesus, we have the supreme example of the one who has completely identified with us in our pain and suffering. Jesus was Mary's son, and being a son or being a man, he could have been really detached from what his mother was feeling. He could have been not be able to really feel as to what his mother is going through, because he is the son. But then in Jesus, we have the supreme example as to how we can identify and feel the pain of each other when we are in him. He very well knew what would be the condition of his mother when he has left the face of the earth and she'll be remained back on this face of the earth as a Jewish widow. What will be her condition if she is left alone? He very well understood. Until his last breath, he fulfilled his responsibility of taking care of his mother and handing over 
his mother to the care of the beloved disciple whom he loved so much. He could have handed her over to anybody else also. But then he knew what it takes to bear the responsibility of taking care of our parents, of our elderly people. This is where Jesus is giving us the challenge, friends, that we are to identify with the pains and struggles of our own parents and the elderly people around as they go through the life's journey. And Jesus' words from the cross at this moment are calling us to seriously follow this truth. And if everybody in this world understands this truth, there will be no need for any old age homes or daycare homes for our elderly people or our poor parents and old parents. This is where Jesus calls us to bear the responsibility. When we are, when he makes us, uh, when he makes us very much able when we are able to take care of our own parents, we should not be turning away, away our faces from taking care of them, from respecting them, from giving them the love and care they require. This is where Jesus calls us to really understand these two truths. He never leaves us alone. And secondly, he calls us to identify with the pain and suffering with the people around, and especially with the elderly people around us. May the Lord help us to understand these simple and true facts that are coming out from this world. May we look to the Lord in prayer for a short prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that your word is so real to us, even in today's complex world. Thank you, Lord, that your word answers us in the questions we have for our daily living. And so you were, you were very much aware of what it would take to bear the responsibility of each other. And so you did exemplify it on the cross of Calvary even when you were in utter pain and excruciating agony. Lord Jesus, we thank you for giving us this great example of yours and help us to follow it even though many times it's so tough and difficult for us. Thank you for your living word that has guided us thus far and it's going to lead us in the days to come. Continue to be with us in this worship service and help us to meditate on the words to be able to to, living, to live a life worthy of your calling. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.